and welcome to The Bike Show once again. As usual, we've got loads to get through, including a young man who's determined to prove that adventure riding can be done very much on the cheap. We review the latest MotoGP game for the next generation of gaming consoles, and we take a look at some of the very latest technology that allows you to record your biking exploits. But first, BMW's modern reputation was built in the 1970s with their big touring bikes, the R100, the R80, and so on. Then, in the 1980s and beyond, the GS took over the mantle, and more recently, it's been the S1000R Superbike and even the R9T. But does that mean that BMW have abandoned the touring bike altogether? BMW abandoned the touring bike? Are you mad? The world is utterly obsessed with the GS. The S1000RR has injected an unprecedented sense of hedonism into the German manufacturer's DNA, and the R9T shows that BMW engineers know how to have fun. But for all this to be at the expense of the touring BMW? I think not. And here's the proof, if anywhere needed. Behold the latest generation of BMW Boxer Twin touring bikes, the R1200 RT. As predicted, it gets the liquid-cooled engine update that was first seen in the GS, plus all the electronic trickery in the engine mapping and suspension departments with which we have become familiar in that bike. The frame and running gear have been lifted directly from the GS, and that means the swing arm is now on the left of the bike, with the exhaust running on the right. A close look at the detailing of the bodywork shows that BMW has lost none of its old flair for producing touring bikes that place as little strain as possible on the rider and passenger, who are up for long days in the saddle. Ergonomics are as good as they should be from a company that has been perfecting them for so long. And in fact, everything has that air of being thought out to the minutest degree. Nerdy that may sound, but since when has striving for perfection been a bad thing? Who decided that being good must be translated as being boring, or that practicality, comfort and dynamism can't go hand in hand? the boffins at BMW don't listen to the rest of the world. They stick resolutely to their way of doing things and then sit back and watch as everyone else scrambles to play catch-up and, well, not to put too fine a point on it, blatantly copy them. The RT now uses the 125 brake horsepower liquid-cooled engine that transformed the GS so much and its silky smooth power delivery, now so much more punchy than in the past, makes the big BMW even more effortless as a cruiser and just as much fun when the going gets a bit twisty. There's a seemingly endless surge of torque in any gear at any speed and it's given the big touring bike the heart of a young sports bike. But it's the handling of these big tourers that's the real revelation. They may look large and ungainly, but you've got to remember that most of the bulk is just air. And in the case of the BMW, all of the engine weight is carried fairly low down, so it feels much more nimble than it has any right to do. You can really hustle the bike through the bends with an unexpectedly high grin factor. The suspension has BMW's Electronic Suspension Adjustment Setup, or ESA for short, in which changes can be made by toggling through the dashboard menu. Adjustments can be made to spring and damper rates, adjusting the firmness of the springs and dampers, as well as compensation for load carry. It really does work and makes a huge difference to riding pleasure if you take a moment to tailor it to your personal riding conditions. But it's the way the bike works as a whole that's so impressive. It's impossible to single out any one area that contributes more to the bike than any other, impressive as all individual elements are. I've got to stop short of saying it's perfect because, as you'll hear, there is one fairly large gripe I have. Although, as it has no effect whatsoever on the riding pleasure, it'd be hard to penalise the bike for that. The 2014 R1200 RT is a leap forward, but I'm not sure it's as definitive a victory as I expected it to be. Doesn't mean to say it's not bloody good, though. So that was a pretty positive report, wasn't it? But I have to admit, Harry, 
it's, you didn't come across quite as glowing as I thought you would. Because let me just first say, I haven't ridden this new version of the RT, but I was a big fan of the old one. This one can only be better. Let's go through the good points first. What really stands out? Look, I mean, it's the same engine as in the new GS, so it's a liquid-cooled motor. It is very smooth. It's got lots of punch. It's very happy cruising at highly illegal speeds on the highway, which is what you want with the touring bike. Yeah. Wind protection is brilliant. The equipment you can't quibble at. The suspension is fantastic. I believe there's even this quick, quick shifter type thing. Yeah, they call well. it Gear Shift Assist Pro or something, which actually it works very well. It's not good from first to second. It's a bit yeah. jerky, but from then up, it's just as smooth as butter going through, and even downshifting as well. Although you have to give it quite a stomp to sort of kick it through the gear. But it does work, and it does make, uh, if you've got a pillion on, makes it a very smooth ride for them. OK, so that's all good, but why do I get the sense that, you know, it's not quite what you thought it would be? If I'm brutally honest, I find that there's a bit too much plastic on the bike, it's a, and it doesn't feel like the thickest, heaviest, best quality plastic. It probably will survive. It's a BMW after all, but it just lacks that essence of quality which you'd, you'd expect from a BMW. Still utterly competent, but let's have a quick look at the uh, competition, of which there are still... Look, the Japanese stuff is all a bit old. We've got Yamaha's latest FJR 1300, which, you know, traces its roots back to the 17th century. We've got Motoguzzi's Nord. No, it's true. There's Kawasaki's GTR 1400, which is yeah. very nice. But I think the main rival is Triumph's Trophy. That is a spectacularly good bike. Uh, look. Uh, equipment levels are very similar to the BM. There's nothing really to choose from them, so I think you would be going on brand loyalty. And whether you prefer a flat twin or a, an inline triple. Yeah, that's Both basically... very characterful engines. Lovely engine. I mean, that Triumph engine is superb, and it's... I don't know, I would be hard-pressed. If you put both in front of me and said, pick one, I don't know if I'd like to make that decision, actually. Sitting, on the, you, sitting yes. on the fence. There you go. <laughs> it must hurt. He's always straddling a fence. <laughs> I know what he means there. The entire touring market is full of very good bikes, but I'd agree with you, Harry. I think the RT, although I haven't ridden this new one, and the Trophy, the Triumph, which I've obviously ridden, yeah, both, both at the top of the pile. Mm. We'll let you dwell on that. We'll be back after the break, talking to a young man who's destined to set out on a life-changing adventure. <laughs> 